Last time out of the snowman, it was all about the ice and snow. But we're the opposite end of the country now, and it's all about the gravel and the brick and steel border counties. <laughs> For 2016, the border counties moved completely from the Kilder forests into the classic Tweed Valley stages, many of which will be unfamiliar for the majority of the crews. On the start line of SS1, reigning champions Armstrong and Swinsco were looking to put their disastrous snowmen behind them. No, no, it's not, no snow today. And kind of thinking all week was it going to happen, but no, it stayed quite mild and it's average 5 degrees, 6 degrees, so no, it'll be good and it'll be dry, but looking at it, there's areas of slippiness, so. Last year we failed in Australia, had an engine failure, so that's, you know, hopefully going to improve on that and uh, be, be there to the end. So. Any questions over their pace were quickly answered. Three fastest times over the first three stages put any doubts behind them, and they arrived at service with an 11 second lead. Another driver to suffer on the snowman, Sean Sinclair has swapped his Impreza for an 08 Focus this time out. Yeah. Now the problem with your, your own car and the snowman has led you to being given this to play about with today, eh? This is a bit of a different beast. Aye. I don't know about given, but this, <laughs> certainly it's here and I'm, I'm in it, so there's, there has, has been a few things adjusted to get it, but uh, aye, I'll give it a go. The swap worked. On the pace from the word go, Sean, with Kirsty Riddick alongside, set three top four times to sit in second place by service. Fifth on the snowman, Gary Pearson and Robbie Mitchell were looking for more of the same. Yep, same car, it's just uh, basically it's had a sticker wrap uh, for the other driver who uses the car in the British Championship, so no, we've just taken advantage of the black and used it, so it looks quite good, quite happy with it. It does look quite good. Now, um, you you had a, a, a fastest stage time on your second stage in the car on the snowman, so that was obviously a good start for you. But again, today, completely different uh, day for you. Yeah, certainly today, uh, a lot, really fast stages, so we've got quite a lot of the car to learn ourselves, you know. Um, one test before the snowman, and uh, it was probably about eight weeks ago now since we've had that test on gravel, so it'll take a bit of getting used to the gravel and uh, certainly getting used to the high speed in the brakes, so I uh, will get there. And they were on it right from the start. Three top three times put them in third place, only five seconds back from the focus after three stages. The snowman had been a disaster for Mike Faulkner and Peter Foy also. Despite last minute brake repairs on the eve of the rally, things were going far better here. Fourth overall, and top Mitsubishi after three stages was an encouraging start. Having a much better start to their second SRC event, John McCrone and Rianne and Gelsomino were happy to sit fifth after three stages, 12 seconds back from the Faulkner Evo 9. It was a slow start to the day for championship leader Donnie McDonald, with regular co-driver Andrew Faulkner competing on a Junior 1000 event, he had installed former SRC champion co-driver Paul Beaton in the hot seat. Sixth was a steady result after three stages. Only one second back, Bruce McCombie and Michael Coots were also having a steady run. No real problems to report and hoping for a second leg push. Robbed of a snowman victory on the final stage, Mark McCulloch and Michael Hendry were trying the new Evo on a gravel surface for the first time. Struggling with handling problems, they were surprised to still be in the top ten. And then came the possible drive of the day. Despite being in an elderly Impreza, Scott Much and Greg McDonald were literally flying. Ninth in their first border counties was a phenomenal effort.
In rounding out the top 10, Andrew Gallagher and Jane Nicholl had started strongly, but had fallen back as the car began to suffer a similar issue to the snowman, the car intermittently cutting out and hampering their progress. We've got the one and only service of the day, so it makes it quite a long afternoon. Any changes to the car, tyres, are you quite happy with what you're using? I'm going to stick with the tyre, I'm going to stick with the Pirelli, and I'm going to stick, well, obviously stick with the Pirelli, but I'm going to stick with the, the KM. Even though it's dry today, I'm going to stick with it because it's got a stronger sidewall. So we're repeating the stages going back through, so I've decided, you know, just hopefully for puncture proof, I'll be there. So what you'll gain and what you'll maybe lose will be... We'll soon see, but no, that's it, game plan, and I'm going to raise the back slightly on the car as well, which uh, my mechanic says I'll no notice the difference. I think I should. I uh, know so. that's pretty harsh, being a driver, you know, say, being yeah, a champion. But who's he to question you? Exactly, he says you'll not notice it, which is quite hurtful, but <laughs> it's a trick, but as if he actually does it or if he doesn't do it, and then I say, oh, that's a lot better or it's a lot worse, and he'll say, anything. I haven't done anything, so I'm kind of got to keep an eye on him, yep. Uh, yep. Fairly him. happy. <laughs> Fairly happy, but I obviously want to be first. So, I <laughs> uh, know uh, I think we're, we're I'm I'm over cautious with a lot of the stuff I'm supposed to be not cautious with. But I think I'd rather that today. I think I would like to get to the end of the rally and be in the top three was always the target somewhat. So I'm quite quite happy. But you always competitively you always want to get the top spot. I think you need mileage in the car, obviously. So you're getting that today. Aye, right. no, I know definitely it's definitely improving and it's. I think it's committing just a wee bit more, you know, I think we're, I'm breaking early and then having to speed up to get to the corner, so, but that's that's going to come definitely not. No, we kind of got to hang out in the second stage, I think we're second quickest and then second quickest again in the last, so it's really good, I mean, uh, Jock's on a fair pace and Sean Sinclair's on a really good pace as well, so, uh, you know, like Sir Faulkner and them not far away, so, no, we'll just keep doing our kind of thing and see where we, we end up at the end of the day. Out for the second loop and Armstrong backed off. Second fastest in both SS4 and 5 left the Impreza with a 9 second lead with one stage left to go. Jumping into second, Pearson and Mitchell made their move on SS5. 8 seconds quicker than anyone else despite a puncture showed the potential of the new Fiesta. Fastest on 4, Sinclair and Riddick then lost what they had gained on 5. They arrived at the final stage in third, 10 seconds off the lead. Still fourth, Faulkner and Foy were leading the Mitsubishi Challenge. Unfortunately for them, they were going as hard as the car would allow, and were now in a no man's land, with over a minute to the next crew. Having a better second loop, a change of tyres had helped McCulloch to deal with some of the handling issues. Now fifth, they were only 11 seconds up on McDonald and Beaton, still playing the championship game, and taking no risks in sixth, despite a puncture. Continuing the Mitsubishi train, McCombie and Coots were only three seconds back from the championship leader. They had to watch their mirrors too, with Dale Robertson and Stuart Loudon making a charge up the order after breaking a drive shaft early on. Also moving into the top 10, Barry Grinwater and Neil Shanks were having another steady run in the Evo 10 after another slow start. Fifth quickest on SS4, things were moving in the right direction for Gallagher until this happened on 5. Two punctures after that impact dropped the Blackwood Evo to 10th with one stage left. Two flat tyres. Before the final stage, a look at some other drives. The border was round two of the Scottish two-wheel drive championship. Despite a long winter break from rallying, Greg and Chris McKnight were absolutely flying in the first two stages. Then a sudden hairpin in three saw them leave the road. Once out of the ditch, they continued, despite some damage, to grab third at the finish. Championship leaders Grant Ingalls and Robert Gray took another Class 8 win in this round. 
perhaps outmatched in power to the other Mac 2s, they grabbed second in the two-wheel drive standings and took 24th overall. But once again proving that he's still top dog in an escort, Steve Barrister took yet another two-wheel drive win in the SRC with Kim Baker alongside. They also took maximum points in the Northern Historic Championship. Yeah, it's been good. Um, <clears throat> yeah, stages were quite tricky, you know, Ellie Bank very fast and, um, but uh, yeah, done really well today, really pleased with that. Kim's done well and, you know, it's flowed. And, we, you know, Greg, Greg unfortunately had slipped off, but I mean, that's how, that's rallying, isn't it? You know, you, yeah, you've got to get to the end, so, but um, we've had a real good day, really pleased with that. It was also round two of the Resurrected Challenger series. Third this time out and 13th overall went to round one winners Scott McCombie and Mark Fisher. Twelfth and second challengers Alistair Graham and Laura Stewart also grabbed the group N win, despite Alistair claiming to be confused at his pace and still confused about how to drive an Evo 9. Twelfth was a fantastic drive. Uh, no, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But everything just seemed to kind of go the day, and the stages were brilliant. And sometimes, I suppose, sometimes when the stages are kind of kind of rubbish, my confidence kind of goes, and I back off too much. If there's too much mud, but the, the stages were just perfect. Eleventh, and fulfilling his aim of beating Scott McCombie, John Wink had yet another solid drive and took maximum challenger points. Taking 10th after a trying day, Gallagher and Nickel. Ninth made it two top 10 so far this year for the Evo 10 of Groundwater and Shanks. Only two seconds ahead at the finish, it was a quiet run for Donnie McDonald and Paul Beaton, this result leaving Donny second in the championship points. Salvaging 7th after a rough day, Dale Robertson and Stuart Loudon. Going one better than the snowman, McCombie and Coots grab 6th. Fifth with a car that still wasn't right, McCulloch and Hendry are now 3rd in the SRC points after 2 rounds. Fourth was the best that Faulkner and Foy could get out of their relatively standard Evo 9, top Mitsubishi. Second quickest on the last stage wasn't enough for Sinclair and Riddick to move out of third. This result was still Sean's best since his return to the SRC. Oh no, car was really good. Car was awesome. Uh, hi. Good, because there was terrific in the notes too. There was too many things to be worrying about this morning, but it all worked really well, so I'm delighted. You know, I've sat with Kirsty before, but I mean, you knew you had nothing to worry about with her uh, pedigree, eh? Oh no, definitely not. Definitely not. Just still, you've got to, you've got to click in the car. I think you've got to, you've got to, you know, trust each other. I think that's the main thing. So, uh, no, I knew I could trust Kirsty. I don't know whether she would trust me though. That was the, <laughs> the biggest thing. But no, it was good, really good. But who was going to win? Blasting through the last stage nine seconds quicker than anyone else, Pearson and Mitchell arrived at the finish tied for the lead. Unfortunately for them, the tie break didn't go their way. Second, however, moves them into the championship points lead. Yeah, really good day. Uh, to be fair, probably quite a slow start for us, but uh, yeah, learning day, so very happy to have uh, came out uh, tied first. So yeah, we dropped to second, but yeah, to be fair, second, third or fourth, we've been really good to us today, so uh, the best result we could probably could have hoped for. Doing just enough thanks to their fastest time on SS1, Armstrong and Swinscoe showed that they were still a force to be reckoned with this year, and no one was taking the title without a fight. They have to be concerned about the pace of the Fords moving into the Speyside. Mm, I don't know, there's still a lot of pressure on, there's a long way to go, and a, long, a lot of people will be coming away today thinking, do you know... And, it, and it, it'll always be like that and, and it's the same for us we come away from the snow and feeling pretty flat so 
today's our day, hasn't it? We perked up, so you've just got to push on and just make sure that your car's reliable and get to the end. So well, We've been trying to win this one for a wee while, so that's another one ticked off. So onwards to the space side for you guys. Yes, I know. We we'll do OK at the space side normally, so I just need to cut out. Hopefully, with this average speed limit being up, the chicanes will be gone and we'll just have a good rally, you know, and, and that would work out. Today has been one of the best rallies I've been at for a while you know because of that reason I quite I quite like just driving stages and uh, no Mickey Mouse stuff so that was it so that it does it for me well done Border Counties. As the championship moves into round three it looks like the title race could be one of the best in recent years. Who will take the victory on the Speyside stages in April? <laughs> 